What's it actually like to study at the University of Cambridge? Well, here is a realistic day in the life of me, a biology master's student. I get up at around 9am, brush my teeth and feel bad for not turning up my room. I take a shower, shave although my facial hair is still prepubescent, and then have a very boring breakfast followed by a soy milk cappuccino because I'm quirky. I check the mirror to see if it's still working and start heading to the lab. It's literally a two minute cycle away, so my leg game is weak. Once in the zoology department, I then take world's oldest elevator, like seriously, how is this still legal? I then bust into the lab, struggle turning on the lights and start work by scooping ice into an ice box. I fill it with water to maximize heat transfer and then grab some super toxic chemicals that cost more than Gucci and then make a dumb comment. This is probably very poisonous. No shit. I then take the elevator from hell to the basement and crack open the Antarctic freezer to fetch some of my samples. Now is probably a good time to tell you a little bit about my work. So I'm a master's student at the University of Cambridge and I'm based at the Department of Zoology. Although what I research isn't zoology. Here's why I study. Every time a cell divides, it needs to replicate its DNA. But we don't know about all the proteins and different factors that are needed for DNA replication, which is why I am testing to see if this specific protein, called PRMT1, is needed for DNA replication in human cells. And as part of my experiments, I take nuclei from human cells and add proteins to them to see how they replicate their DNA. We're now going to put our reactions in the incubator. It's going to be in here for three hours at 37 degrees. If you've got some liquid in an Eppendorf tube and it's not all at the bottom, what you can do is put it in the centrifuge. Make sure to balance it. Whoops, you put it in. This was actually embarrassing, like it wasn't even intentional, I was just so incompetent. And then you spin it. Now, when you open it, you'll find that, hang on, there's now loads more at the bottom. Okay, I then dumped the ice into the sink to stop global warming or something, I don't know. This is my lab partner, Peter. He's currently like an hour behind slacking as usual. You're gonna get my way. So. <laughs> and I head to the office where I see the undergraduate student who will definitely be my boss one day. Yes. And then our supervisor teaches us how to freeze human cells using liquid nitrogen. Also, this was from another day, but I just wanted to show you how cool it is to pour liquid nitrogen. Hashtag science. So, exciting news. Apparently, Robert De Niro is coming to Cambridge on Sunday as a guest of the Cambridge Union, uh, which I am part of. Flash forward, I actually got to kind of meet him. I then take the elevator from hell down and cycle to college to get some grub. I've been cooking a lot recently, but today I decided to violate my bank account. I'm just kidding, it's not too expensive. Anyway, my housemates joined me, although they didn't wait for me. Mrs. Kieran, he's a snake. What do you guys think of Ilya's Cambridge advice? Anyway, back to the lab. So, taking these tiny cover slips and placing them in the well. Here's a clip of my lab partner pouring some cocaine. So, we're going to spin this at 3,700 rounds per minute. Ultimately, what I'm doing today is preparing a bunch of samples that I will look at tomorrow under a very expensive microscope. And what you're seeing me do right now is add a kind of milk to my samples so that they are covered in protein, which will improve the quality of my samples by stopping the colorful stain I'm adding from binding to everything. We're now going to the basement floor to grow some real life human cells. I grow human cancer cells in pet traditions and I need to make sure that I don't contaminate them, so I inebriate my hands. I then unleash this cute microscope and then take out my cancer cells from the incubator and have a sneaky peek under the microscope. The cells look good, nice and alive without any contamination so I still have my will to live. I then sanitise the fume hood which is where I need to be working and which needs to be as clean as Boris Johnson's criminal record. I'm just kidding, it needs to be a lot cleaner. What I'm doing now is adding an enzyme called trypsin to my cancer cells and this enzyme causes the cells to stop sticking to the plate by breaking down surface proteins. And as you can see, it's made my cancer cells go from this to this, so it's working. I then suck up the cells and put them into two new dishes with fresh growth medium. 
The growth medium is like food for the cancer cells, and from my understanding, it's made from blended cow fetuses, so it's like the least vegan thing I've ever come across. But if I don't do this every two to three days, then my cancer cells would die, and I wouldn't get a degree, and then I'd be sad. Anyway, my cells look leng, and I put them back in the incubator, and I'll see them in a few days. And I need to make sure to sanitize the fume hood, or I might contaminate my cells, which my inferior lab partner, Peter, managed to do a few weeks ago. We used this stuff to clean the, the pump switch, drink up all the cancer cells. This is like bleach, but 10 times worse. On a bad day, I have to restrain myself from drinking it. I then go back to the lab and continue preparing my samples, which I'll then be looking at under a microscope tomorrow. You might be thinking, oh, surely it's gonna be done by now with the samples, but oh, I wish. It takes like seven or eight hours to prepare my samples. And if I do one step wrong, then it's all for nothing. And I've wasted hundreds of pounds worth of lab money. I'm using Notion and my lab book, keeping track of like when I do what, and then I can scroll back and see what the uh, protocols are for different things. And I also have a pipetting plan on Excel, so I know how much to put in each test tube and how much of what, and got a helpful plot as well. So the results I get from all the work I'm doing is images taken on a fancy microscope and I analyze them using this software called image a and what i can do is write a script here which opens all the files i want so i'm going to run it and then it's going to open a load of files i did the code wrong and it's not working this is very embarrassing and i swear to god this happens every time i try to show something to someone so these are the kind of the results that i get from all the work i'm doing and it's showing nuclei so like the brains or cells and you can see the different colors depending on how much the near replication there is. Back to the lab, and I'm finally starting to get to the end of my sample preparation. I take out some glass slides, put a drop of mounting solution on each, and then I place the cover slips, which have the nuclei attached, onto the slides. I then use nail varnish to stick the cover slips onto the slide because my experiments hashtag slay. For real though, nail varnish does the job and it's a good example of how in the lab we use everyday products which are usually a lot cheaper than specially made scientific products. Like some of the chemicals I use cost £200 for less than a hundredth of a gram, but why spend so much money when you can go to Tesco and get a truckload of nail varnish? 5pm and we're done, now just time to clean up. I've now finished preparing my samples and put them into the cold room which is like a fridge but it's a whole room. So after spending all day on these, I'm now putting them in the cold room and I'm going to image them tomorrow. I can now leave the prison and I head home. It's just before 6pm, going home. And immediately get changed so I can head off somewhere else. I'm cycling into the climbing centre which is about 10 minutes away if you're a pro cyclist or 8 minutes if you're me. I'm just kidding, I can't do that. Climbing is my main sport and I do it every two or three days. And here's a video of me first trapping whilst my friends harass me. <laughs> Come on. Nice. I then cycle back, get changed and go to my next thing, which is a social event with the Cambridge University Mountaineering Club. We're at something called a swap, which is when two societies meet up. Today is the cycling club and the climbing club. We do a bunch of fun challenges and here's my housemate. How are you Alex? We end up at a friend's house after the social and then we end up at yet another house. I wasn't expecting tonight to be so social, but it is what it is. I then walk home, do the wordle and pass out in my bed.